Welcome to researchers.com. You are on a journey with me to explore terms and phrases that have become very popular or you might hear if your organization is going through agile transformation. Today we're going to talk about user stories. User story. This is one of my most favorite topics. So if I digress, I'll try to edit that out. <laughs> Let's start with some background. The word user stories probably dates back to the 90s when Ken Beck's published his book, Extreme Programming Applied. And later, Bill Wake, who happened to be one of the early practitioners of extreme programming, came up with the acronym INVEST. Uh, it is a, still a rule of thumb for any product backlog item or user story to meet the definition of ready or a study guidance. So INVEST, uh, it would mean uh, independent, negotiable, valuable, estimatable, small, and testable. Even though testable comes last, it is one of the key things that determine whether a user story is ready or not. User stories originally were meant to be read or written on an index card. Okay, so I found an index card and I want to show you. Though you cannot see, probably I don't. My cameraman is not very adept at zooming in. I can put a picture in the comment. But the only reason I'm sharing this with you is to get an idea that now that we work on Jira and Azure DevOps, where we are able to put in pages of information and links and PDFs, screenshots, just remember that when it started, user stories were supposed to be written on index cards such as this. In this, I did write that as an admin, I want to generate reports so that I can assess member activities. So not a great example, but I just came on the fly. But again, just showing you the age old uh, index card to set, bring some perspective to it. The back of it, uh, the back of the card could be used to add in finer details, which is like the acceptance criteria that we say. So uh, if you want to uh, generate uh, reports, where should we view, what should be authorizations be like from the security perspective, should it be PDFs, all these other things should just, this card, the back of it should have been the space where we jotted it down. And again, going back uh, to one of the principles, human interactions and communications is far more important than documentation. So this would be enough to spark a discussion or a heated debate. And that's all. We must always remember what the origin was. Sticky notes were also very popular. I also like sticky notes and the reason I love them is they were very useful not only in moving around the board but all, uh, but in creating user story maps. Uh, personally, I loved user story maps and that should be a separate topic in itself. If you are interested in knowing more about it, you can read Jeff Patton's book on user story mapping, which is excellent and kind of gives you the entire end-to-end -end, uh, uh, introduction into user story mapping. Like it's everything you really need to know. But uh, in my, when I started working as a business analyst, I did have the op option to work on Jira and user story map just made a lot of sense to me um, because I could map the entire flow uh, either from the user's perspective or from the product perspective. Like we have the opportunity to go by layers or address it how the entire journey of the customer would be. So I miss that, that'll be a different topic. I don't want to digress, uh, back to my notes. Another favorite uh, source of information on user stories is Mike Cohen's uh, Mountain Goat software blog. I'm sure you must have come across it. I will link it in my comments or description below. What is a user story? A user story is a short, simple description of a feature told from the perspective of the person who desires a new capability, usually a user or customer of the system. User stories typically follow a simple template. As a, so this is the type of user, you'll put it, it's dynamic. Then you state, I want, like what would be the action point? What is the feature? What do they want to do? And finally, so that, some reason, this reason being the business value that is accrued from this uh, ability or capability being developed. Even though there is so much 
literature or guidance on user stories. Some things that we must always remember are that all user stories need not fit the as a user uh, template. So you might have stories which is related to architectural design or a security flaw, which would typically not fit into this template, but is a user story nonetheless, because it has, uh, it is an idea, plus it is offering some business value. Another very important thing about user story is to imagine it. Okay, so here's an analogy. Uh, imagine it to be a layered cake. So a user story must address all the layers. So uh, for example, uh, a feature that you're developing has some UI perspective. Of course, it's part of your user story. Then you might have underlying middle layer. Then you might have a security layer. I think the, right at the bottom, you might even have the database, like your, whatever changes you're proposing has an impact on the database. So your user story should address all these layers. And so just for the, you, to simplify, I'll uh, just to make it easier to understand, always remember the layer cake analogy, I do. So the top, the frosting being the UI and the base, being the database or the architecture. So ensure that when you're writing a user story, you're thinking from all the perspectives. And guess what? If Even if you go to your developers with this one-liner detail, they will be able to tell you the implications real quick. And that's how I develop my user stories. Product owner is responsible for the product backlog, hence all the PBI items and ordering the user stories, adding details is a responsibility that lies with the product owner. But there's something that's not talked often about. It's though the accountability of the product backlog lies with the product owner, it is not only the product owner who writes user story. In an agile team, anyone should be able to do that. However, the accountability of the product backlog does always lie with the product owner. So even if somebody else is creating a user story, the responsibility or to add details, refine it, break it down, size it, kind of lies with the product owner who's going to spearhead that with the Scrum team. Another misconception or idea that I often come across while talking about user stories to people who are being introduced to the idea for the first time is that user stories technically are replacing documentation. This is not the case. Uh, user stories, uh, we totally depend on the process flows, uh, visual diagrams, data sets, even calculations. If you want to show a spreadsheet, whether you are defining the calculations, I've used it in the past, as well as screen prints, PDFs, um, it could be guides. Uh, so, you know, it, it, this is a myth. So, Keep your documentation in place. This is not replacing it. It's just a way to make it manageable requirement, breaking it down, refining it with the team, and tracking it. Uh, that's where user stories come in and are better probably than age-old uh, Word docs and Excel spreadsheets that your team might be using now. I have to limit myself on user stories, else I could go on and that would not be ideal. So if you are interested in user story mapping, I am planning to come up with something on that. But meanwhile, please refer to the book User Story Mapping uh, by Jeff Patton. It's, it's worth your time. Thank you for watching the video. If you would like us to create more content on this series, then please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you are notified every time I'm posting new content.